So this right here is Wheeltop's brand new EDS GXE wireless shifting system for your gravel bike. I'm super excited about this because as you guys probably know, I've been using the L2 system on my gravel bike and I liked it all the way up to a point where I rode in the rain and it just didn't function the way that I wanted it to. It couldn't outperform other brands like SRAM or Shimano. And I thought, really, was it worth the money at that point? So I wanted to get away from a cable driven system altogether just because that's where everything's going in the future and we all can kind of see that. So Wheeltop reached out to me and they asked me to take a look at their brand new GXE system specifically made for gravel bikes. Now, while we're taking a look at this, I'm gonna go ahead and start installing this on my gravel bike. The nice thing about a wireless setup is the only things you have to worry about are the brake cables or the brake housing. This system can either come with mechanical brakes or hydraulic brakes. This whole system with the hydraulic setup came in right around $549, which is absolutely crazy for a wireless setup with hydraulic brakes. So you're gonna get two different boxes with this. You're going to get the actual EDS GXE setup. This is gonna have your shifters and your rear derailleur in it. And then also you have the EDS disc setup right here. And this is gonna contain all of your hydraulic brake stuff. The only thing I don't think this comes with are the actual discs themselves. Those you're gonna to have to supply separately. And we'll go over the details on what size discs this is capable with. One thing that was really cool is that this came with an easy MTB bleed kit. So let's set the disc setup aside for now. And let's take a look at the EDS GXE setup. You're gonna get it in this nice little box. I think their presentation is really good. Now there are two different sizes of derailers that you can get for this. This system is completely compatible with a one by setup as of right now. Now in this box, you are gonna get another box inside this sleeve. And then whenever you open it up, you've got the wheel top logo embossed into this foam padding here. And then underneath this, you do get this little kind of instruction manual and then some QR codes for the manuals and the actual app to set this up because this whole system runs off of an app to where you can customize this and get this dialed in perfectly for your gearing. Now, one of the things with this system is that this is compatible with a seven speed all the way up to a 14 speed. So this system is pretty much future proof and it's also backwards compatible. So if you have an older bike that is running a seven speed, eight speed, nine speed, something like that, you can use this system. So it really does make it versatile when it comes to what bikes you could actually put this on. So inside the box here, everything's protected really well with foam. You are going to get a charging cable and this charging cable is proprietary and it uses a little bitty magnetic piece that attaches to the back of the derailleur. And I'll show you guys how this works once we get this fully set up. Right here is the actual rear derailleur. So you can get this rear derailleur in a 75 millimeter cage or a 93 millimeter cage. The 75 millimeter cage is compatible with an 11 to 46 tooth and the 93 is compatible with an 11 to a 51 tooth. I have the 93 because I run basically a mountain bike cassette on my gravel bike, which gives me a huge range for gravel bike riding. Now, a couple of things on this rear derailleur are they have this shark fin design. They're claiming that it does help with some aerodynamics and just allowing the wind to slip through. I don't know. That seems to be kind of like a sales tactic to me. This looks pretty, pretty standard. But overall, this system looks really impressive. Now, the battery on this is not removable. And from what I understand, the reason behind that is because SRAM holds all the patents on removable batteries but I do see a couple of Allen keys right here. So it does look like you may be able to replace this. One of the really cool things about this setup is the battery is 800 milliamp hours, which is massive. I think that's three to four times bigger than a SRAM access battery. They're claiming 20,000 shifts for each battery and that you can recharge this up to, I believe 800 times. So the longevity of this battery is kind of crazy. I'm wanting to see exactly how long I can go on a single charge with this over months of using and not using it. 
because I wonder if just setting idle, if it's gonna be using a little bit of battery or if not. The nice thing is, is what I saw in the app is that it'll actually tell you how many shifts you have left. So there's a shift estimator and you can kind of see like before you go out on a ride, you can be like, oh, I've got 10,000 shifts left. There's no need to actually switch over or charge this thing up. And you can see how many shifts you've actually done. It's a pretty complex system inside the app. Now I haven't used it yet, but just reading about it, it does look like it's pretty detailed. I'll put some images up on the screen of what the app looks like and kind of all that information, but does seem to be pretty refined. One thing that's really nice is that these pulleys do appear to have bearings built into them. So let's set this aside and take a look at the shifter. Now you're gonna have buttons on each side of these shifters. So if you ever do run a two by system or if you have a need to run a, maybe you could do an electronic dropper post with the uh, left shifter over here, but I'm not really sure what this would be for other than a front derailleur. And if you could set this up to a dropper post, that would be really cool. That'll be something I'll have to check into. But overall, these levers look pretty standard as far as the comfort goes. They've got a nice rubber grip right here, standard clamping mechanism right here, and then you've got your hydraulic hose right here. Now you will have to order these specifically depending on which one you go with, whether it's hydraulic brakes or whether you go with mechanical brakes. This will be a little bit different on the inside. And then up top here, see if I can get this open. I've been told that these are really, really stiff rubber hoods and I can see that, but I'll have to get in there, have to pry that pry up under there. In here is a CR2032 battery and that's what powers this. There are some slight graphics right here. You can't really see them all that well because they're black on black, which is nice. You don't wanna have anything that's too flashy in my opinion. So let's take a look at the main shifter that you're gonna be using or brake hood. This is gonna be the right side and this is gonna control the rear derailleur. And there's just a little bit of difference in this in comparison to the, uh, the left shifter. And that is there's two buttons. You've got a button here and then you've also got a button right here. Now, both of these shifters do have a little light up at the front, so it indicates whether or not it's shifting. Now, there is a little tiny spring down in here that does have me a little bit nervous that actually springs these buttons back into place. I'm gonna be curious to see if that stays in place uh, or if I have any trouble with that in the future. But otherwise, this shifter is basically identical. The brake levers are the same, and the back end where the clamp is and the hydraulic hose is the exact same. These look to be pretty comfortable, but we're just gonna have to get them on the bike and actually see how they fit. So that's what you get in the GXE setup right there. That's everything that's in the box. I do like how this is packaged. It's really, really tight in here. You don't have to worry about whenever this thing ships to you having any issues because there's a lot of padding and these things came in absolutely perfect looking, no issues whatsoever. There is a little bit of residue from the little sticky thing that protected it, but just cleaning it off with some maybe degreaser should fix that. Okay, so let's take a look at the EDS disc setup. These are gonna be two piston hydraulic brakes. Basically the exact same thing. You get a little sleeve on the outside of it, and then the box is similar to the actual shifting setup nice foam padding in here to protect everything. Now everything in here is a little less delicate than the actual shifting stuff. You get a nice presentation. These look pretty good so far. I mean, look at that uh, kind of design there. It reminds me of Magur and how they've got different color inserts right here for where the pistons are. Now these are two piston and they do have ceramic pistons from what I've read about these. And this looks pretty promising. The nice thing is, is that it can use all of these different Shimano brake pads. It comes with some brake pads already pre-installed in here, and it comes with some pre-defined length of hose, probably more than what you actually need. So you'll probably want to be ready to cut or trim these hoses and then re-bleed the system. But the brake pads are going to be a resin brake pad and they do have these cooling fins on them which is really nice to see but what i like is that you can use so many different styles of common brake pads in these 
you don't have to worry about these being kind of a one-off thing where you're gonna have trouble finding pads in the future. Now, both of these are flat mount design, which is typical for a gravel bike or a road bike, and they do look pretty durable, pretty strong. I've been really impressed with the L2 brakes that I put on my bike last year, so I have high hopes for these, that these will perform just as well, if not better. Now, inside the box here, you also get some parts. And this comes with, looks like it comes with extra barbs and olives, which are really nice because having extra barbs and olives are going to be really good, especially if you start cutting this hose and maybe you have an issue. You don't wanna have an issue where you mess up a part trying to put it all back together. Then uh, you don't have a barb or olive on you. It's got them all right in here. Now this does use BH-59 hose, which is a Shimano hose. And the BH-59 is a high quality hose that allows relatively high pressure and should be perfect for gravel or road bikes. Now these brakes are compatible with 160 mil rotors or 140 mil rotors. If you wanna go bigger, you're gonna to have to figure out how to um, purchase an adapter for it. But this is two 160 mil adapters right here, depending on how your bike is actually set up. And then you also have a flat mount here for a 140 mil rotor. Now that's everything that comes with the EDS GXE setup, including the hydraulic brakes. And as you guys can see, I got this thing set up on my bike and it was relatively easy to do. We're gonna go ahead and get this whole thing synced up, use the app and get this dialed in. We should be able to fine tune this even by each gear. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And then we can take this out on an adventure and see how it performs for the first time out on some gravel roads. So after getting this fully set up, I went ahead and went out on my very first ride. It was a really short ride, but it was proof that the system actually works and it works surprisingly well. Now, I am gonna have to use this over several months to really determine how well this actually works. And if you guys wanna see that, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and leave me some comments below about what you would like to know about this new wheel top wireless setup. But as always, get out there and ride your bike. We get to it, yeah, yeah, we do it, yeah, I go up. We influence, yeah, see me moving, yeah, I glow up. Every time I 